black economic empowerment has not always had a positive image in the media. This is partly thanks to a few individuals who became mega rich overnight on the back of black economic empowerment. While the majority of black people who were supposed to benefit remained poor. My name is Peace Hyde and this is my worst day on Forbes Africa TV. In 1995, amidst the negative reception of black economic empowerment in South Africa, one company set out to do things differently. With money collected from former anti-apartheid activists, teachers who had taken retrenchment packages, and other ordinary people from the Cape Flats, our next entrepreneur set out to make history. Let's take a look at who he is. Fred Robertson is a leading figure in the South African business community. Having gained experience on the national and international business stage through his directorships of Remgro Limited and Old Mutual Emerging Markets Limited, Robertson is the chairman of Lion of Africa Insurance Company Limited, Lion of Africa Life Assurance Company Limited, Sea Harvest Holdings Limited, and House of Monotech Limited. Robertson began his career as an unqualified teacher before attending teacher training. In 1980, Robertson joined Old Mutual as an insurance representative, where he worked for 10 years, both as an insurance salesman and then as manager of the branch. Robertson is the executive chairman and co-founder of Brimstone, which he started in 1995 with his partners. Brimstone is a black controlled managed investment company incorporated and domiciled in the Republic of South Africa, employing in excess of 3,400 employees in its subsidiaries and in excess of 24,000 in its associates and investments. After 20 years of investment, Brimstone these days claims assets worth $628 million. Its associates are among the biggest names in Africa. Life Healthcare, Oceana, Tiger Brands, Grinroyd Limited, and Athena Capital. Thank you for joining me on My Worst Day on Forbes Africa TV. And joining us today, we have one of the most prominent figures in the South African business community, Mr. Fred Robertson. Welcome to My Worst Day. Thank you, Peace. Um, now, first of all, we'd like to ask, who is Fred Robertson? Well, I'm a boy here from Cape Town, you know, in District 6, which you've, you've seen. I've grown up here in Cape Town. Uh, we've created a business called Brimstone Investment Corporation. Um, we started on Cape Flats, as it is known, um, and it now uh, has a shelter base. Um, Brimstone now has a shelter base that spreads across South Africa. We are listed on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. And from a startup um, 20 odd years ago, we are now a uh, we now have a market capitalization on the Janusburg Stock Exchange of about three and a half four billion rand. Wow! Um, now you started your early part of your career doing a lot of odd jobs, yep. um, and I understand that you actually began your journey um, as an unqualified teacher. Uh, oh yes. Explain to me how do you go from the classroom to this multi faceted company that's doing so well. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, yeah, I was an unqualified teacher because there was no job to head and um, I was standing on the street corner here in District 6 before it was destroyed by the bulldozers of the apartheid regime and uh, a teacher was going on leave or furlough as they called it then and because I had matriculated shortly before that um, the principal asked me just to take care of the class. Uh, this led to, from what I thought would be two or three months, led on to more than a year and a half of, of teaching as an unqualified teacher. I then went off to, um, uh, uh, to teacher's training college, where I qualified as a, a primary school teacher, but ended up teaching high school. school. <laughs> so it's very Again, I'm qualified to do the job. <laughs> now, I understand that one of the things you're very passionate about is black economic empowerment. Um, can you speak to us a bit about that passion? Where did it come from? Well, um, you know, in 1994, we had our uh, political freedom in South Africa. The first democratic government was elected 
under our then president and father of our nation, Nelson Mandela. Um, with, with political freedom, in fact, I knew that economic freedom must come because under a, uh, an apartheid regime, the majority of South Africans were prohibited from owning land, from accumulating capital, from actually having their own businesses. They were removed from the land. And a new government was never going to tolerate this. My view uh, then was that it, there was an opportunity, a real opportunity, for black people to begin to participate uh, in the economy in a meaningful way, for us to create our own businesses, to create employment for our people, to create wealth, and really take control of this economy. Uh, and it was, black economic is a form of indigenization of our economy. And so it's, it's really very simple that uh, it was opportunity. And as an entrepreneur, um, I decided to, to, to take the opportunity and also to take my people, my family, my community, my clients, existing clients along. And that's why we created a, a listed company like Brimstone Investment Corporation. Now, um, you mentioned, you know, the journey from your early days to this very moment in time has been extremely challenging. And I can only imagine the type of worst days you've encountered on the en route. But I have to ask, what is your personal worst day in business? Oh, I've had quite a few personal worst days in business. And you know, there's a view, it's not how many times you fall on your face. It's how many times you pick yourself up after you fall on your face. It's the resolve to succeed. It's the resolve to succeed in spite of having failed once or twice or thrice. But success comes after a number of, of failures. I, I use it as success lessons, lessons of success. But in the whole personal space, the, the, the personal worst day is when one feels betrayed. And we've had two or three occasions where we've done very good business with very good deals with people who turned out to be quite bad people. That's why we've coined a view there in, in Brimson and say, there's no, you can't do a good deal with a bad person. You just can't do a good deal with a bad person. And um, we've had a, a situation where, um, well, our first, our first uh, 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 um, situation, I'll come back to the people. Our first situation of, of, um, of having our worst days is when we listed, just a few months after we listed. We listed on the, the 8th of the 7th, 1998. A few months after that, there was a crash on the IT bubble burst. And there was a global market crash. Our share price had then we had listed at four rand. Our share price had come had gone up to about six or seven fifty, and it came down right below one rand. Now we had shareholders who weren't as knowledgeable in the share market, and we had to go out and explain to them to just hold on to the shares, and we had to we had to have the confidence firstly in ourselves and also understanding the market and then having to explain to the shareholders that uh, that was at the same time we had to keep our uh, 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 while we had to keep our uh, hands steadily on this steering wheel <laughs> of uh, we uh, of the steering wheel of the company there were corporate vultures out there who were wanted to take the company out our share price fell down to below 1 rand but the cash in our company was about 125 alone, besides all the other shares. So, so there was significant value in the company. We decided immediately to, to grow our company smaller. How we got out of it was to grow the company smaller. We gave back 150 per share to our shareholders as a special dividend. Our company got smaller, our market capitalization came down to something like 30 million market capitalization. Our share price fell even further to 20 cents. And we clawed our way out of there. 
I was fortunate in having partners like Mustang Bray, who I, uh, was my co-founder in this company. Uh, Nisar Pangaka was there by my side, Laurie Brosen. I was fortunate to have a team of people who believed in our dream and our mission to create a substantial black-owned company, both at the economic level as well as the voting level. We returned, went back to our shareholders, and we have supported shareholders since the start. We went back to our shareholders, we have AGMs where we explain to shareholders what happened. <clears throat> and up to today still, we have more than 300 people pitching up at our AGMs in the evening. The loyalty of the shareholders, we were rewarded with their, with their loyalty. And people started buying our shares again at 20 cents, at 25, at 30 cents, at 40 cents, and that's why we have grown. I think we had, we had touched on to 17 rand. We are now down to about 13 rand again. But throughout that period, people got there. That was one of our worst days, just starting out. Right. When um, you had been listed and then you saw the crash happen, what was going through your mind at that point? Did you ever think it could be the uh, end? I, I mean, we, we were... <sighs> We were like kids in this very expensive vehicle at the traffic lights. And we had all these guys wanting to hijack our company. And these were white people trying to hijack, uh, you know, did a corporate raid on us. Um, we were ruthless with the way we, 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 we dealt with the matter, with our resolve, and how we kept the team together. <clears throat> so that was, that was one of our first worst days. But we've also had other worse days. Uh, uh, um, we we bought a company where a, a, a person had a it was a pharmaceutical company where this person had a, a performance agreement in. So we paid it. Let's say we, we we paid for the company, but he still had to perform on the on the profits. We then found out that there was quite a lot of illegal business happening in the company, and the company was raided. We didn't know about it. And we were completely fooled. Another hard lesson to learn. And over the front page of the uh, of the local newspaper spread, empowerment company in drug bust. People didn't relate drugs to pharmaceutical drugs; they related it to illicit drugs. And we had to crawl back from that as well. So you know you, you want to talk about worse days. You've got if you've got a big bag of uh, of tissues there, you can, you'll be able to cry with me. But it's not it's 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 not about the bad days. It's also about the good days. And there were many more good days than bad days. And any entrepreneur, any businessman uh, who wants to be uh, be, uh, uh, be doing good in business will tell you. And any business who's done well. He will tell you his sad stories and he will share his sad stories because those are lessons just not for himself but for others as well. I said you can't do a good deal with a bad person. In our clothing business, we had the franchise for the Springbok Rugby jerseys and all the uh, uh, supporters jerseys. And I thought this is great because we could do local manufacturing and whatever. The person who was running the business, who was also a co-owner, felt that he must, he had to import it from China because it's cheaper. We later found out that it was, there was a big scam attached to that as well. Um, we had to close the business down. It, we lost more than 100 million rand in, in that case. It destabilized our company, but even then we clawed back. Were there any points whenever you encountered these um, worst days that you thought you were just going to give up or that maybe this is not for you? Oh yes, you do. You do go, you do feel that low points, you know. You do feel that you seem to have lost confidence in, in people, uh, in partners and um, you really feel like just giving it all up. But then very quickly you realise that you have a responsibility to your shareholders. They are key. And if you go back to your shareholders and you explain what has happened, they will, in fact, uh, 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 respond positively. They will support you. But you've got to look the problem in the face. You've got to look at the face. You've got to recognize what your faults are. You've got to make sure that the lesson is bigger than the loss. That you've had.
So I just wanted to take it back to your first worst day. Um, at the point where your stocks crashed and you had a lot of people actually wanting to buy your company, what was the main reason why you didn't sell? A lot of people would actually sell at that point. Yes, uh, um, you, you are so right. But you know, the we could have made, my partner Mustak and I could have made a significant profit with it but that wouldn't have been fair to our shareholders. We had taken the shareholders on a journey and these were uh, shareholders who were for the first time investing on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. We had taken our shareholders on a journey and we had given them an undertaking and a promise that we're gonna build a company for the long term that will give them dividends over the period of their life and for as long as they have their shares. Um, there, there's no short-term route to making a fortune. And our, our shareholders understood that as well. They could have been in quick, in and out. And then how would I, if I wanted to start a next business, how would I look at them in the face? The best was to explain to them what was happening. And it was an education for, for all of us. And so it's, it's, again, I come back to it's not how many times you fail. And in business, most successful businesses are built on a lot of hardship and tears. And entrepreneurs who have fallen on, the, on their face a number of times. But it's how many times you pick yourself up after you have. And then to have the team around you to march on and journey forward. So, so... So those were, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's the resolve. We, I also believed uh, very firmly that an overnight success is never overnight. You know, um, people talk about uh, the 10,000 hours that you've got to put into it. So for us to have, ex to have expected that we would be successful over just overnight is, was foolish. And, um, and we had a bigger dream and vision to be a company that it was significant on the exchange. Yes, we probably just over uh, um, in market capitalization on the Janusburg Stock Exchange. We just in the top 150 or something like that, but it's, it's still significant from where we've come from. And the other thing about our company is we we believe in employing people, creating jobs, and uh, that was also it's an important part of, of black economic empowerment, in creating uh, wealth, jobs, creating entrepreneurs. These are all significant uh, uh, pillars of, of black economic empowerment. It can't just be about Fred Robertson or one or two other single entrepreneurs. We've got to make sure of the economic benefit that the economic benefit of black economic empowerment cascade down into the poorest communities. I think when a lot of people hear your story, it almost shows that no matter what your background is, you can achieve it as long as you put the energy in. But there's a lot of young entrepreneurs that would want to ask you if they had the honor of sitting where I am. Um, what would you say are the main principles that a young person starting out in business would have to um, adopt to end up as successful as yourself? You know, you know, as a youngster, I used to sell fruit and veg and newspapers and everything. I used to be an entrepreneur right from the go. The fact that I became a teacher was just a deviation, I think. But if a young person was to ask me uh, about starting, I said, you've got to have a dream, you've got to believe in it, you've got to have the passion, you know. you. You've just got to be, and you've got to take your game out and play it under the lights. You can't keep it under a bushel. You know, your, 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 your successes and your abilities, you can't hide it away. You've got to, you've got to have the confidence to, to step out into the open. And then there's a few things. As I say, you can't do a good deal with a bad person. There's no right way of doing the wrong stuff. There's no right way of doing the wrong thing, wrong stuff. You've, you've just got to and you've got to keep focused, whether you're a broad investment company like ourselves, 
or whether you're narrowly focused on, 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 on just one industry. Um, and then hard work, it's never killed anybody. Just work hard, be passionate, and that belief in yourself. And, and, as a, and if you have a worse day in your life, you just go and sleep and get up the next morning and have a great day. <laughs> because <laughs> they're very much, I can promise him, uh, him, uh, that entrepreneur one thing, he's gonna have a few more worse days of his life. And, but it's how you deal with that worst day. And that's, that's what it is. I, I can, as I say, if we had more time, I can tell you a lot more of our failures. But the failures are insignificant compared to the number of successes that we've had and the number of smiles we've brought on people's faces and the jobs that we've created and the wealth that we've created and the wealth that we've shared with our, with our people. For myself, I, 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 I work with a team of people and it's just wonderful to be working in a team that's so dedicated, that's so passionate as I am. And for us to, myself and others, to provide opportunities for other young people to come through, whether it's in our company, whether it's in our, you know, or, or, or all our companies that we have, um, and to help and show other people how to, uh, there is a route to success, you, you know. And uh, so for myself, it's, it's uh, um, to do much more of the same and try and be more successful at what we've done. And for Brimstone, obviously, it's um, to build a bigger, better company, learn more, to go uh, with our subsidiaries, be a transnational company. One of our companies called Oceana, a, a fishing group that we've invested in, have just bought a company in, uh, in the US, in the fishing area as well. Another company, Sea Harvest, we're already exporting globally into Europe, um, but we've, uh, and into Australia. And we've just bought a, a company, in, a listed company in Australia, um, or invested in one. Um, our clothing company is opening retail stores across our, our, uh, our investment in the medical, uh, 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 private health care has also gone in global. So for us to have started this little company here in this corner of Africa on the Cape Flats, which is where the Africana, the Boers pushed us out of our, our comfort zone and threw us onto the Cape Flats. For us to have started our little company on the Cape Flats, that now has an investment holding company that has subsidiaries that has gone global, that exports product globally, but also hasn't lost its roots, is very, very important. Where our AGMs are still more than, more than 300 people, a picture it, where the, uh, uh, our profits and dividends also go to those who are historically disadvantaged and less fortunate through our, uh, through our NGOs. We've got to do more of that. And we've got to become a bigger, better and greater company. Wow, oh, that's been an absolutely very insightful and inspiring interview with you, Mr. Fred Robertson. Thank you so much for joining us on My Worst Day. Thank you. Thank you, Peace. Now you've heard what the man himself had to say about his journey to the top, but let's find out what his closest allies had to say about this phenomenal entrepreneur. Uh, my name is Conrad Keldenes. I'm the Sales and Marketing Director of Sea Harvest Corporation. Fred Robertson is the Chairman of our Board and also the Chairman of uh, Brimstone Investment Corporation. Okay, my name is TJ Tapela. My full name is Kakula Tapela, but I'm generally known as TJ Tapela. I'm Managing Executive at uh, Brimstone. Wendy Nathan, Director at House of Monatic. Fred is a passionate person. I think he engages in everybody that he does business with. My knowledge of Fred, well, he breathes and lives entrepreneurship, you know, not just uh, for Brimstone, but also for the little guy. My interaction with him over the last 20 years is a reflection of the kind of person he is. Uh, serial entrepreneur, involved in this and that all the time. Um, he has a lot of vision for what he wants to achieve and he's very driven. 
traveling with him to, to various places and he's always looking for an opportunity. How do we make this count for, for the community? Consummate entrepreneur and a carer of people. He's very intuitive in terms of people issues. Compassion and passion in terms of what he does and his business ethos is, I think, of a very high regard. Um, so he's a, a, a fun-loving kind of person. Helen Keller once famously opined, character cannot be developed in ease and quiet. Only through experience and trial and suffering can the soul be strengthened, ambition inspired and success achieved. How will your worst day shape your character? My name is Peace Hyde and this is my worst day on Forbes Africa TV. Thank you.